what I've done here is I've made a little um, test fixture to hold my circuit board while I am testing, measuring things, and so on. Um, one of the reasons why I made this is because it's kind of a pain in the butt trying to measure the things on the circuit board because it doesn't sit flat on the table because it has these little pins sticking up and it's it moves around and so what I was able to do is make a very bulletproof stable mounting platform for this thing to sit on there we go so with the circuit board mounted on here it's very rock solid I wanted to make sure the thing does not move around at all and so what we can do is put this on the table and we just flip it on. I've got it marked so R would be regular mode, centers off just like the Rolevo, and then harmonic mode. Now I don't know if you can hear this but there's a little bit of an audible whine, so it's it's currently oscillating. Um, I just made this thing to make life easier while I was waiting for this output cap replacement, which is supposed to be here in the mail today. So as soon as that thing gets here, I'm going to change this cap out and see if we do get an actual working Evo circuit. Thanks to a very generous individual at the DIY Stomp Boxes.com forum, I now have a very well thought out and fairly accurate as much as possible LM386 Spice model that's working really great. Um, it has cleared up a lot of mysteries and things that did not make sense when I was using these other Spice models that I got off the internet. So special thanks to uh, you at the forum, you know who you are. And so now I'm just gonna show you the uh, output waveforms here at the coil. What I've done is the left side here is in regular mode, the right side here is in harmonic mode. I'm simulating this at 150 millivolts coming into the input coil. Which I don't know, it's probably reasonable. Um, and 247 hertz, so basically an open B string. So what you see here is the blue trace is the what's coming out of the LM386. And the green one is what we're seeing at the coil. Um, and these are modeled using my um, the circuit as I have it built with the coils that I wound. Um, we, I, we know that this isn't going to be exactly what's in the, in the actual Evo, but um, the point of this is just to look at the waveforms and see how, the, how theoretically the uh, circuit will function compared to what we'll uh, see in real world here in just a little while. So, so as you can see, it's not doing a whole lot to the, the waveform as it as it gets processed. I mean, we've got a little bit of harmonics in here, looks like. Um, it actually kind of looks like fourth harmonics to me, which is interesting. Um, I'm not really that much of an expert in interpreting harmonics on waveforms, but so when we come over here to the right side, now we're in harmonic mode. This is what we see at the output coil, right? So. Basically, they're almost the same um, either mode coming out of the LM386, but what you notice over here is that now we have all this harmonic activity going on. I mean, this thing's going crazy, right? And now these, these are not that dissimilar from what I saw in real world. See, so in my previous video where we did a little waveform study, this is what we saw with a untampered factory Evo. So this was the regular mode. You can see it looks a little bit different. It's a little more spiky looking. Um, 
I don't know if this changes with the frequency. It might a little bit. It could be possible also that the output cap in this oscilloscope messed with the waveform a little bit because I had it in AC mode. Someone brought that up. I don't know if it has affected that much, but we can look at that maybe in the future. But the point is, we're not seeing waveforms that are worlds apart. Like we're not looking at square waves versus something else. Now, if we come over here to the harmonic mode, that is what we had. You can see that they're not that dissimilar. I mean, that looks remarkably similar for assimilation. Uh, even this, even this really good, excellent simulation that I currently am using uh, for the LM386, the sub circuit and all that. It's very well thought out and stuff, but there's still questions that we don't know. So we're, I don't think we're ever gonna get a perfect model, but this one is light years ahead of any other ones that I used. So uh, great job. And um, okay, so the other thing I wanted to show so there's another debate going on about is the circuit is the circuit self is it oscillating all the time or is it only oscillating when you put a put this over a string? So that there's two two camps here, two trains of thought. I'm I'm in this first one, which is I believe that the circuit is continuously oscillating and at some frequency when you put the ebo over the string that overpowers the resting state we'll call it oscillating frequency and it takes over and then once the feedback loop gets going it assumes the frequency of the guitar string the resonant frequency and then it just keeps it going the other train of thought is that all these coils are very specifically tuned to some spec that uh, allows it to not be oscillation until you do something to kick it off, like you touch the string or something and that gets it going. But um, that would be great because it would be really good for battery saving. We use a little less power, but the problem is, to me, if, uh, well, from a manufacturing standpoint, you know, that seems like it would be really finicky, like any variation in your, your magnet composition might screw it up and it won't work. Or what if you have a batch of LM386s that don't act predictably like the last batch, um, which there does seem to be variation in these LM386 chips from my personal experience. So to me, it kind of makes more sense from a manufacturing standpoint to have the thing always be oscillating, be less problems with finicky components that have to be exactly a certain spec. I mean, I guess it's possible these days to, to have stuff built that precisely, but um, this is one of the things I want to find out in this whole process is what is this thing actually doing electronically? Like I mentioned in the previous videos, you know, we all know that when you stick to the, the uh, Ebo or the guitar string, it makes a feedback loop and sustains it. And, you know, but I'm talking about electronically. What is it actually doing? So that's what my quest is here. Um, anyway, so the other thing I wanted to show, um, two other things, actually. Um, so currently I have this as a one meg ohm feedback resistor. If we change it to a 13K, it appears to me that what's going to happen is it's just going to, it's just going to poop out and die. It might try to start and it's just going to go, and that's it. It's not going to do anything. So the, uh, there's been discussions about this, that it probably needs to be something like around one mega ohm for it to sustain uh, the oscillation and the um, the simulation here seems to kind of confirm that so the other thing is okay 
going back to the, is it oscillating all the time or is it only when you stick a guitar string under the Ebo? So I did this little quick simulation here. So I just changed this to zero input on the coil, nothing, okay? And we run this and look, it looks like it's just sitting there happily oscillating. So this seems to, in my mind, confirm that the, um, the circuit's actually oscillating full time, but we shall find out when we uh, examine my circuit board and do a little bit of testing. Yesterday afternoon, I got the new output capacitor put in here, and the circuit board now basically looks like how it would come out of the factory if you imagine the uh, PCB not being kind of mangled, and these two, these three capacitors, I know at least two of them would have been those blue Nichicon 16 volt electrolytics, they were nothing special. Um, I am not having the circuit excite the guitar string, and... I'm trying to figure out exactly why that is. Um, I've been messing around with this feedback resistor here. I had it as a 13K and it was oscillating. And then I tried it with the one meg ohm because it's simulated better on LT Spice. Um, with the one meg ohm, it wasn't oscillating at all. So what I did is I took a one meg ohm pot and I just wired it as a variable resistor in place of the feedback resistor so I can monkey around with the values and see where it oscillates, what uh, values where it wants to oscillate and not oscillate and uh, it seems to oscillate with anything between um, 250 ohms to about 190k but at some settings the LM386 gets a little hot which is another reason why I wanted to build this fixture because I have an easy way to just quickly shut it down uh, to, to try to avoid damaging the LM386. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so the next thing to look at is the waveforms on my little DSO shell uh, handheld oscilloscope that is going to at least let us see the waveforms and the frequency that this thing is oscillating at. Um, now, before we do that, I, I have a, a couple of things that I'm thinking might be the reason why this isn't working is probably number one, this coil, this coil isn't producing, I guess, enough uh, current for the input of the chip. It's probably too tiny for it to really get a feedback loop going. And the other thing is the DC resistance is probably needing to be like four or five hundred K, you know, with that tiny like 44 gauge wire with probably 3,000 turns. Um, or my other thought was maybe this is one thing I hadn't really tackled yet is does the phase of the coils matter? I was kind of thinking it doesn't, but maybe it does. That could be another issue. So. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is turn this on and put it in regular mode. And then we're going to zoom in on my little oscilloscope here. So here we can see it's oscillating currently at about 
seven kilohertz and it kind of looks like a massively clipped sine wave uh, with without any rounded corners and I thought that was interesting because I was initially thinking that we might have square waves on the output of uh, the LM36 now the, the scope probe I'm looking at the input to the output capacitor and um, you can see we have uh, well, 1.7 1, 1 volts RMS, so around 3.5 volts peak-to-peak -peak on the uh, waveform. Now I'll switch it off, and I'll go into harmonic mode. Now you can see it's still kind of squave wearish, squave wavish, <laughs> squave wearish. That's a new word. Um, so you can see it puts kind of a slant on the top and bottom of the waveform. The frequency drops slightly. Um, last night I was looking at this and it, it seemed to drop at about uh, 0.2 kilohertz. And here you can see uh, RMS voltage 2.1 volts, peak to peak is 5.15. And that seems to be pretty steady. And the other thing, okay, so what I did is I got a guitar string and I just kind of held it over the coils to see if it was doing anything. And when I do that, if I can get it to respond, it it drops the frequency slightly. You can see how it kind of messes with the waveform where it's where it's moving it across the screen there. That's what happens when I hold a string like right across the coils. So it is sensing it, so it's doing something, right? And then we'll go to normal mode. So I'll hold the string over the coils again, and you can see it kind of, it messes with the waveform a little bit. It's, it's, the coils are noticing something's going on, so I'm thinking probably the case is that the input coil is just kind of numb. It doesn't... It's not sensitive enough and it can't produce enough current, I guess, to, to, uh, or enough voltage at the input for the, it to, I guess, get a, a feedback loop going. So, um, that's, that's my findings on that. I thought that was pretty interesting. So we're still in, uh, regular mode here. And I'll switch over to harmonic mode once again and it looks like that. So this seems to confirm my theory that it is always oscillating and when you place the coils over a string it changes what the circuit is doing versus it's just sitting there not doing anything at all and then when you put a string there it starts to do something. Um, now once again the caveat here is that I wound it with coils based on specs that at the time that we thought maybe would be good. But I think that the, the issue here is that the input coil, it's only 108 ohms, and uh, there's probably, uh, it's just not sensitive enough. It can't generate a strong enough waveform at the input for it to start a, a feedback loop and sustain it. So that's my current theory, uh, I'm debating whether or not I'm going to rewind the input coil or not. Um, I might give that a try. It occurred to me that I didn't look at what was going on on the input pin, so let's just take a quick look at that. I'm going to turn it on to regular mode and touch pin 3 here. And here we have a sine wave running at 6.3 kilohertz voltage peak to peak is about 99 millivolts RMS 33 millivolts we go to harmonic mode and we have a waveform that looks like this 6. Point, if I can keep it on there 6.29 kilohertz peak to peak voltage 98 millivolts 
RMS voltage 32 millivolts. That's interesting is because if you look at the output, now we're we're square wave. And a much higher output. I decided that I'm going to rewind the input coil. So what I've done here is I've dismantled a Mouser uh, 42 TMO18 audio transformer, which is a 10K 10K. Uh, center tap transformer and it's got pretty tiny wire and it's not still not as small as the wire in the Ebo but uh, it's definitely thinner what I, than what I have in there now. I got the input coil rewound it was a real pain in the rear but I got it done. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It ended up with a DC resistance of 446 ohms. The the apparent inductance measured 46 millihenry and the capacitance was 0.1 microfarads. The other thing I've been neglecting to mention uh, for a while here in these videos is that I've discovered that these are not actually ferrite rings, they're steel rings with some kind of coating on them. On them. And I only noticed that because um, you can see where the coating's been scraped off in a couple spots and you see the shiny metal, metal underneath. So I think it's, uh, it's just a steel ring with some sort of coating on it. Uh, I'm not sure what. Someone suggested it might be an MU metal ring, but I really don't think it is. It's here, but at first glance, it kind of looks like a ferrite ring if, if you're not paying super close attention. I added a small bracket to the back here because sometimes the circuit board would pop off the pins while I'm trying to measure stuff and also um, this allows me to hold it upside down to test it over the pickup and uh, very simple it's just a little piece of aluminum that I shaped and to the proper dimensions to snugly fit over the pins here on the uh, circuit board so I guess you could say that's now in its final form. So I'm going to turn it on regular mode now and we'll take a look at the input waveform. So here you can see we have 3.17 kilohertz. It's a sine wave, about 51 millivolts peak to peak. If we look at the output, we have a square wave-ish, well, not square wave so much, it's just a really clipped sine wave. And peak to peak voltage is about 4.7 volts. I have a brand new battery in here, by the way. And then we'll look at the harmonic mode and here's the input so you can see here that looks just a little bit different it's still a sine wave kind of but it doesn't have the the little humps in there like it does in the does in the regular mode and peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage here is 27 millivolts. If you look at the output, it looks like this. So now we have a uh, clip sine wave once uh, again, but there's kind of some slants on the tops and bottoms of the clipped areas. And... Um, Peak to peak voltage is about 6.2 volts. So now I'm going to do a test, the screwdriver test I call it. It's actually kind of more of an awl, but I'm going to place this across the coils. 
and we'll watch what happens to the input. Right, so here's our input. You can see the the uh, voltage on the input basically kind of doubles. Close to doubles, right? So it is sensing much stronger now uh, when you place a metal object across the coils. Now, why won't my why won't it excite the string on my guitar? Well, maybe there's a few reasons. The operating frequency is still too high. Maybe the uh, millivolts at the input of the chip needs to be higher. Maybe I have a problem with the phase. The coils are out of phase. Maybe it could be that the, the um, input coil got damaged too much so it doesn't have the strength that it needs to have. Now for kicks, let's just look at the output of the uh, of the output coil. So here I'm in regular mode. That's what our waveform looks like. If we go to harmonic mode, that is what it looks like. So kind of a shark finish looking uh, sine wave versus and a much higher output as well versus uh, not so much of a shark fin returning to LT spice for a moment I plugged in the new values of the uh, input coil and feedback resistor and this is what I get Let me change the input to 150 millivolts so we can be consistent here. So that's our sine wave. This is what it's going to look like coming through the input coil. And then at the output of the LM386, we get kind of a weird looking waveform like that. At the input coil, it'd be something like this. At the output of the input coil, we get sort of that shark finish looking waveform that we did see in the real world on the oscilloscope, but um, this is not simulating anywhere close um, in harmonic mode, which we're in. We were seeing uh, very, very large voltages compared to what this is showing. So this is just a good example of how, well, first of all, this is not an easy circuit to simulate in, in a program using a SPICE model. And secondly, you can see how uh, the results in a program like this can lead you astray if you're expecting this to follow the real world exactly, because it just doesn't. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it's still a useful program. It, it gets you in the ballpark for most circuits. Um, this one's kind of an exception, I'd say. I originally wanted to resurrect this circuit to full working order and make a video of me using it, but there are still some unknown variables that prevent us from getting all the way there. I feel like it was a success actually bringing this Frankenstein back to life and it at least satisfied my curiosity about how this mysterious device works. So what conclusions can we draw from all of this? We can't 100% nail down everything about the Evo because of those unknown factors, but here are some points. The circuit is a parallel LC oscillator, the frequency of which is set by the value of the input coil and the input capacitor. The circuit apparently operates at a specific frequency which will excite the strings into vibration. Ebo calls this direct string synthesis. The frequency used in the EBO appears to be about 2.2 kilohertz. It appears that the circuit must be oscillating continuously versus a tipping point format. I was not able to make it turn on from a resting state, but it could also be that my input coil is still not sensitive enough to make the circuit behave that way. The feedback resistor, whatever the actual value is, 
appears to manipulate the exact frequency at which the oscillator runs and the strength of it. The only real way to verify what is going on is to partially dissect one just enough to uncover the back of the circuit board so measurements can be taken and not the wholesale destruction of it. It is noted that some people have successfully made Evo workalikes using that wrong schematic floating around on the internet. But the difference here is that there is no feedback loop to deal with. This is what makes figuring out the plus Evo so much more difficult.